first game here for group number two. Dropping in once again on Aaron Gal, and once again, a pretty nice plane path to go along with it. Lots of things, or lots of cities, I should say. Lots of areas still available uh, to be dropped to Degon. Let's get this started. Yeah, uh, again, this lobby a lot closer in terms of score, which was surprising because it felt like we didn't have as many big time orgs, right? You had Cloud9, you had Pittsburgh Knights, and those were your PMPL representatives, your PUBG Mobile Pro League Americas representatives here. So this is a lobby where teams like Hype can step up and, and, and make a name for themselves. Team like Noel can step up and make a uh, name for themselves. Execute as well, another team. And then Venerated, they came out of nowhere. Another mostly Spanish-speaking roster here trying to uh, step up and book their ticket to the finals. I mean, I do think it's funny, though, that you mentioned that the Knights are up there with Cloud9. And look at where they are on the leaderboard. <laughs> it's yeah. you know it's it's so maybe not the greatest uh, not even maybe it's definitely not the greatest showing from them uh, if they are supposed to be one of the teams coming into this was with such prestige behind them and I think this is something that Degon and I pointed out a lot in in day number one was sort of this idea that we we have high expectations for PK but it's it's kind of frustrating to us to see them not necessarily make the right decisions or set themselves up for that success. The biggest thing was they continuously got themselves caught out on rotations. They'd bleed one or two members early on and then they'd scrap, they'd fight. They'd, you know, this this great play, whoever was left alive would, would absolutely go nuts to keep them into these final circle situations to get the points they did, they were able to get. But we know they have so much more in store for us. So we'll see if they're able to actually execute on that today. I need to see them shake off the rust or whatever it was, the jitters from last week especially now that we've gotten a pretty hard shift on this circle. Decent amount of teams outside. We'll see if anyone makes the uh, option to early rotate up to Kameshki, Stalberg, Severny, uh, and then how the circle continues to rotate through there. Yaz would actually be a pretty good spot to set up camp. Yeah, I, I think Yaz is always a good spot to set up, but then leaving Yaz, if it does shift away, is kind of yeah. inconvenient. I feel like once you decide you're going to Yaz, you're kind of stuck there in the set of buildings that you're able to clear. Correct me if I'm wrong, Cammy. No, that's basically how you want to view cities. Cities are seen as, as most cities. There are certain positions in certain cities, uh, like the southeast, no, sorry, the church of uh, Pachinki being, I think, the biggest example of it, but that you can control like it's a regular compound, but for the most part, the big meat of a city, it's a last resort. You don't want to have to go there unless you absolutely have to. Now, a team like JCR, where they're in the Northeast, they're around Yosnaya, they could take a position on the hill south of Stalber to kind of control access to Yosnaya and right. have it as a potential play later on in the game. But I, I really don't expect to see anyone, much less JCR, go in on the first circle. That is, that's way too early. <laughs> yeah. Uh... JCR though, they are one of these teams that needs to have a big, a big day, and they had a disappointing showing so far. I do think JCR can bounce back, but like what we saw from some of these other teams, like a 303 from Group One, maybe they will just play aggressive and go wild and, and try some crazy stuff. Who knows? They might want to. I'm looking at their their games from last week. And statistically, granted, they've only had one Sanok game, so it's kind of hard to compare that to Erangel and Miramar, where they have two each. But they've performed the best on Miramar, the worst on Erangel. <laughs> so they might actually want to go a little more aggressive in on this map, in this particular game, because this is the last chance on Erangel. Let's see if they can't get some points to even up that average. Unfortunately, their position in the circle doesn't really lean itself towards that. But flip side their position in the circle leans itself towards playing more of a conservative early game, and hopefully they can get more placement points just by virtue of not having to fight so early. Right. We'll see as these teams decide to get their items early on. Doesn't look like there'll be too much craziness between squads. Early rotation out or into Georgie, North Georgie for execute. On the opposite side, Cloud9 always drops South Georgie. They don't care who's there. They don't care about any of these, uh, uh, any lobby differences. They dictate the pace. It's the kind of team that uh, Cloud9 are. And uh, when I go back to Cloud9, I think a lot of their kills, a lot of the action that came from week two was on the back of Pittsburgh Knights. 
constantly running into Cloud9 and constantly <laughs> losing these fights. Uh, so I'm interested to see Cloud9 kill other people other than Pittsburgh Knights. <laughs> yeah, it was a little it was a little frustrating to watch, I think, if you're a Pittsburgh Knights fan. Just constantly running your head into the same meat grinder. Uh, not super optimal uh, as we're seeing them rotating on now. Looking to be fairly safe, though, of course, they didn't do it fully unscathed. Uh, as we are just continuing to see them looking to set up early. And of course, with this sort of hard shift circle one, you need to get yourself in position right away. You cannot dilly dally. Yes, teams are going to want to loot. And sure, you can play towards edge creep, but there's going to be a lot of teams clogging up that southern side of the circle. We're going to, and I'm, so that's why I'm curious to look who is going to opt to take over the north first. Rotating down can be a little bit awkward. Um, but if you play it slow, you play it right, you do your scouting correctly, it shouldn't be an issue for these top teams. Yeah, and I, I, I don't expect it to be uh, early on, at least. Uh, these quote-unquote top teams, but I, I'm more excited to see who wants to try and stake the claim to being a top team, because it, it's just such a such an interesting uh, dichotomy right now, because some of these top teams just aren't there, so who's going to hop on into that next group. Best kept secret. They had a couple moments in the last set of games as well last week. I think it was a uh, dark. That was looking a little bit more like manager AFK dark, dark uh, manager for one of the squads. He's a staple in the community. And again, uh, I love the fact that mobile open gives the opportunity for teams like this to have their uh, chance to show up. I like this position that they've taken at the beginning as well. It's this sort of compound, the lower ridge that's south of Diaz Naya Field, but never mind all of that, because JCR, they, wait, did they, they left their sub, North Suburney position to come down to the Yasnaya police station. Yeah, JCR is uh, questionable, questionable right so, now. This is one of those positions that it's okay to hold in the early game in the city. You can leave from this spot, but why would JCR leave their free position east ridge of Stalber around Kameshki to come here? I don't know. Remix and Sammy <laughs> now. The ones left to answer it in uh, Red Reserve Star looks like thank you very much. I, I really don't care why you did this, but uh, we'll, we'll take the extra point. Red Reserve, one of those teams on the bottom half of this leaderboard trying to climb up. I think they have 30 points right now, along with Pittsburgh Knights. So every point counts here. Remix, find a place to park, please. <laughs> what is he doing? You're making Cammy angry. I'm not angry. I'm just really confused. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Is he giving, is he giving up on it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, Magic's finding the other angle. Oh boy, making sure his teammate can. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, they'd have to commit some resources here to keeping Sammy alive. And I, frankly, a push though. I don't know if it's worth it. Oh boy, here we go. We fought along with right now. Uh, Ralfino going for it, driving around, making sure it's safe before he hops on out. I, I think, think ultimately uh, he was looking yeah. to see if something was reviving. Uh, because he, he got shot at, he should know that if he went there and got out of the vehicle for the full kill, it would be a little risky. But as long as no one was on that body for the revive, it's gonna, the, the bleed out's going to happen eventually. So I actually like the decision to not stick and waste ammunition as well as put himself in danger for that point. The point, as you can see in the kill feed, does eventually go over to them anyway. All right. Well, nice little start here for Red Reserve. We touched on this uh, Red Reserve squad last week with a quick highlight an older organization uh, brand bought and revived by a new ownership group and investing heavily in the PUBG and uh, PUBG mobile side of things trying to uh, return back to moments of glory this is a team that had a CSGO team this is a team that had a, uh, a Call of Duty World League squad so very comfortable as a brand as a team and they're trying to rally around a squad and a good way to do that is make it to uh to the <laughs> finals of a major right. yeah like that'd be a solid start here for this PUBG mobile squad cloud nine doing some scouting out it does look like 
They found some friends. Ooh. The Marksman. Back at it again. Kilo and crew. This is a team that impressed me last week. Well, I wanted to say they impressed me. They had a couple moments that were like, ooh, really nice. But then when I looked at the leaderboard at the end of the game, they, they didn't actually put up the most impressive numbers. So I want to see if they can actually convert some of those individually stellar plays and chain them together uh, into sort of long-term game excellence and actually get themselves some points. Uh, this game time excellence. I like game? that. One. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> truly, truly, I started the sentence and I had no idea where it was going. And that's where we ended up, Digon, which, as we all know, mm -hmm. as commentators, is often just what happens. And that is what uh, happens. And here we all are. We're on a journey together. Yeah. I don't mind game excellence. Look, I was game just excellent. Good. I was just like, where where are we going here? <laughs> we're Cloud nine. Nine. The, the, so Cloud9, the last week, have been playing so loose. They, 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 they realize, hey, in some of these lobbies, they don't get punished because teams aren't uh, as aggressive in terms of their rotations. And then they don't get punished in terms of teams wanting to take shots from distance. And then they don't get punished because teams aren't as great as some of the teams <gasps> on the world level. Yeah, Bayo is able to dodge that one out uh, that's to, uh, to to punish the, with their shots. So Cloud9 does a lot of this where they, they scout around, they're in the open, and then they just rotate in uh, to a spot because they've gotten that information. They do a lot of that. In PMPL, they do get punished every now and then when Bayo separates off, does his scouting by his lonesome, and then gets caught, and Cloud9's not in a position to punish. But in a lobby like this where even last week, the matches were very slow and very deliberate, I felt like, until probably Zone 5, Zone 6, they feel a lot more comfortable to gather more information. Looking at this circle, there's a lot of water starting to be added. I mean added in terms of percentage. This circle has more percentage of it as the ocean than the previous circle, even if it is less overall, but it's a smaller circle. That's how math works. Yeah. <laughs> mansion area. I wonder if anyone's going to go and, and take try and take mansion early. Mansion can be a bit difficult because of how wide open it is. But the further east you go, the fewer full compounds there are. There are positions to play, of course, but there are positions that you need to be a lot more flexible on. You got to be a, a lot more loose on sometimes the hilltop of the rock and then the small little dip. But I think everyone's just trying to rotate before they start to fight. And as you mentioned, that kind of is what we saw last week. Give me curious now. There's some positions around here, like prison being one of them, Popovka being one of them, where I feel like sometimes it's just bait. Like you, you back yourself into a position and you actually don't have a whole lot of options, especially yeah. like those hills around there. I just feel like team, teams go there and they take them because like, oh, it's open, it's free. And it's like, yeah, there's a reason it's open. It's because once you put yourself <laughs> in there, you're just backed into a corner and you completely limited your options. Uh, as Starluck is trying to continue oh. to get lucky here. Ooh, the vehicle and his health bar. Both with not a whole lot going for them, but he is able to get himself out alive. As we look at the rest of the team, Fate and the crew coming in north from Kameshki. Uh, and everyone else is looking towards the coast here uh, as Cloud9 controlling that area. Yeah, I was trying to see who was shooting at Starlock. It was uh, BKS. And then <laughs> right on the kill feed, it shows up right afterwards. Hey, you were shooting at me? I'm going to pop you right back. Nice little trade back there. I, no one's going to get flushed out here. Everyone's from distance. Everyone's still rotating safely into the zone. As this one's been a little bit more peaceful. Uh, looking at this map, doesn't look like any teams are going to run into each other quite yet. And I think something to note here is uh, this lobby started with 16 teams, uh, as we stated at the top. And a couple teams got DQ'd. And with that those teams now removed from lobby, there's a lot more space for uh, these squads to rotate in and rotate through. I think adding that extra couple of squads would take up a lot more space for early fights. Yeah, and that's actually another reason potentially why it's been a little slower of the er early game. But it also just means that teams are given more freedom to, to set up shop and really like have a solid 4v4 once you hit the late game. Quick statistic, if you don't mind. I calculated this it. out because it, it, it's interesting. Looking at the two groups, the average number of kills per victory across the entire across this entire event so far, it's a flat 11. Group one had 10.4. Group two 
has 11.6. The winning team on average has more kills than the winning team in group one. And you might think that that means that it's that this is a more aggressive lobby, but actually it's the flip side of that. The more aggressive a lobby is, the more spread out kills tend to be. While on this one, more often than not, they get funneled towards uh, the, the, the winning team at the very end. And considering how there are eight fewer players in this lobby to count towards those kills, it's that actually should inflate that number a little bit more. Right. All right. That that makes sense. Thanks for the math. If everyone yeah. didn't understand that, there's uh, more people waiting in group two, so the winners get more benefits here. So the importance of having four members up and getting yourself yes. to the end is, is going to pay off way more. But still surprising to me that the points are still spread a little bit more evenly. <laughs> Feels yeah. like more, uh, more heavy, heavy handed. And I think one of the sort of the hallmarks of this lobby, and we noticed this last week in particular, is this lobby is a pedal to the metal, zero to 100 kind of lobby. We have not a whole lot of action, not a whole lot of action. First 10, 15 minutes of this game, first three, four circles, second circle, five hits. It's like somebody just like, do we go now, sir? Yes, sir. We charge across the field and everybody just goes. It's absolutely wild. We've seen like 15 to 20 kills in the span of 30 seconds. Uh, it is it is wild as that final as that fifth circle pops and everybody just rotates in unison, uh, and I kind of expect to see that that same sort of pattern here in this game, uh, except the team that can weather the storm, that can survive the panic, that can survive the rush. That's the one that's going to be able to come out on top here. Any team that walks for a second is going to get knocked down, which makes it even more surprising that JCR hold those early game maneuvers. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I can't get off of it. Yeah. It was wild and not necessarily ideal. In fact, objectively not ideal. What can you do? Yeah. Not, not much right now as Ralfino. He's peeking around. Relatively safe. Still waiting for zone two to come on in. Should be coming in here in about 20 seconds. Everyone nowhere near an edge here. No one's deciding to head on over to Lepovka and, and get into the city. As Cameron said earlier, difficult to get out of a city once you're in a city. And it was a good decision because it will be centering up a little bit more towards the Yasnaya. So all of Yasnaya currently in, you can see everyone hop into a vehicle and it's Mad Max on their way north for Cloud9, for VR, for Accelerate, for Noel. Noel has the longest to go, as well as Pittsburgh Knights. And now we might have some action here on the western or on the eastern side of the circle with uh, Red Reserve, Best Kept Secret, Pittsburgh Knights, all starting to clump on top of each other. I mean, this is this might be the moment that we start to see some teams send it towards <laughs> Yasnaya no. because the amount of positions available in this circle Look how much field is inside. There's not a lot to take if you don't want to be on the edge. Yeah, and unless you want to start a career in agriculture. I mean, good luck to you. Yeah. 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 That's I mean, you got a couple here. of pests around you that's going to make your job incredibly difficult. You probably have some of the worst survival rate in your industry, but uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, you got to go for it if you want to make that dough. <laughs> Early shots ringing on through here. Accelerate. Just letting everyone know, hey, this is taken. Don't come over here. South part of Yasnaya is ours. As uh, Fearless going to be in the fields south of Yasnaya. Not not the greatest spot to be in. Uh, not very comfortable, but it'll do. I think this position is the best position in this circle right now. Because while we might see more and more teams go in towards Yasnaya. And if the circle does end up ending in Yasnaya, this squad's not going to be that great in terms of, of hype because pushing into the city from this spot isn't the greatest. But there's a greater chance of teams having to leave and they just have a nice clear tower to just open fire on all of them that do. And they had the high ground to get all the information is great. BKS over here, I believe they're... Actually, is that southeast of Yasnaya? Close towards the edge, but there's a reasonably safe spot. Yeah, not exactly sure as BKS just find themselves, as, as you said, yeah. Southeast, you got VR on that side. 
got JCR kind of close here. But uh, Prism actually going to send it pretty hard across the northern fields. And I think they'll get away. Ralfino's going to take some hopeful shots. Ooh. Oh, Ralfino! From distance. What a shot. And I don't... I think they should be okay. PK might vulture around, but they have Noel behind them. It's it's a big clump up there. The, the orange squad you see on the minimap is Noel. And they can play a factor here on this revive portion. Oh, and no. Rufino, while he may have been able to get the shots, he may have uh, given away a lot of information there. Ira almost able to get those, but that is uh, bullets raining in once more. Beowulf looking towards Pittsburgh Knights. Tales all this time, and this is the action I was starting to talk about. When we get into Circle 4 and 5, that's when things start to spice up here, especially on a map like Erangel that everybody knows so well. They know all the ins and outs, every single angle which means that these long range fights come down to pretty much just pure gun skill. Yeah, this is the, uh, we just got to see a little taste of the classic Cloud9 aggression onto Pittsburgh Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh Knights can never catch a break against Cloud9. They're always there in their dreams. They're everywhere. <laughs> Cloud9, the Freddy Krueger of uh, Aaron Gal right now. Seems about right. Yeah, uh, I would, very much stress out playing against this Cloud9 squad. There, there's not a lot of places for them to, uh, uh, for uh, Pittsburgh Knights to hide from right now. That was an interesting maneuver that the Knights just pulled. They were scouting the, the field, the hill just north of the position they pulled into. One of the players hopped out of the vehicle, and the other player strafed in the vehicle a little bit to give some temporary cover in case there was a peak from the hilltop. Very, very interesting. I've never seen vehicles used like that before. But I, I like the Open use gaming. of resources while scouting out a new area. Oh, and look at oh, oh this circle. Okay. okay. Knights okay. are loving their spot. In fact, they saw that the area north of them was free, so they're gonna send it up there. You can already see one of the members just on the on the zenith of the circle. Because everyone else is gonna be coming in from the south across those fields, past cloud nine, through Knoll. It's gonna this is where the bloodbath starts. Oh boy, best kept secret in Cloud9 staring each other down just over the ridge here on the eastern point. There's also going to be a lot of fun happening in the center. I think Prism is going to be a part of that one. Those Rebellion. Oh boy, Destin crew very smartly pulling the 180. And this is the other fight I was talking about with Prism getting involved. But oh my goodness, nowhere to go. Joshua, not a whole lot of HP to work with. He's just got to try and find the angle, but he can't do it getting taken out here. And this is the first team down in our lobby. Yeah, and it's JCR picking this one up. Much, much needed points for JCR to finally get themselves in the talking. Three points there uh, hey, for Magic, Remix, and Dean. Oh. Cool. Oh, I run. Done. They just want to keep putting the pressure on the teams around them, and they're in a good spot to do so. Of course, the crash is onto them and might not be the best, and they are on the edge, so they're going to have to move out from here. They have good vehicles. They stored them in a place that they won't be losing their tires. They're right. They're ready to kick it off. They're ready to have some action. Oh my yeah. goodness! And Coops with the perfect angle. Degon not able to get the down though. A couple of missed shots definitely going to cost him here because now this position is burned. Yeah, you know, best kept secret. They're going to have to fight their way out of this against Cloud Nine. That's going to be such a tough spot, as well as Noel behind them. They're just getting pinched. This is not where you want to be. This is not how you like to play some pogey mogey. And oh, oh, Pyra still trying to land the shots from distance onto Red Reserve. So that buys time for Best Kept Secret to get themselves back in order right now. But it's just shots raining down from all over the place. Now, Pyra taking a couple of shots from distance. He's forced to back on off. And so for just maybe a little bit longer, the pressure is halted by the team sitting inside of this dip. There are eight teams on this mini map right now. They are, <laughs> there are so many teams within such close quarters and a lot of open ground, maybe a defilate, maybe a tree, maybe a ridge. That's all you have to work with. And Pyra just keeps on tippity tapping on that trigger, just trying to get those shots down range with that M16. Let's see if he can find the angles on Coops and crew. Also facing up against Null long range. Oh my goodness, Squad 9 just aggressing on to everyone. Cameron, they have been such a threat on this outside, but they're going to have to move at some point. 
they actually got zero kills from all of that action. They were unable to finalize any of it because of, as Dunk pointed out, the, the third party pressure. But over here, the Knights, they're getting into it as well. They're pushing down south, but here comes Cloud9 to try and establish themselves in this new circle. It's centered <laughs> up, there's a cool little cover. It's all gonna be fighting out from the edge. Yeah, oh, if you're if you're Pittsburgh Knights right now, you gotta be thinking, not again. They didn't, they didn't belong here. We weren't even not trying to like bully this. them, but here they come. Cloud9 rolling on through. Raven says, see ya. He gets himself in the buggy, tries to get himself out, decides to go back and try to pick up G3 before things, and then decides nope. against it again. Nope. He's just reversing, up saying, mind, Raven. Hop into the seat. Come with me if you want to leave. I'm He's able to get himself to out, and thankfully, thankfully, whole result pops on up here for a best kept secret and knocks down Cloud9 from continuing the push. It buys a little bit more time for Pittsburgh Knights to get away. And best kept secret now sitting with four kills. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Third parties, fourth parties. We have wandered into a block party at this point because this is just non-stop action. Every single team is getting a piece. Just looking at the kill feed, it is a non-stop action. Ralfito's decided he needs to take I don't know, like just a, 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 a water break or something. Not entirely sure. But now it is Raven against the world. One teammate is dead. Two teammates are down. He's staring down a myriad of opponents as Leo. He's just going to send it right to the grave. I spoke too soon. Do your best survival. Oh, OK. Best is excellent. Your best is perfect. Yeah, well, Rad also showing up as well. Hype, they've been quiet throughout, but they have five kills as Leo will get revived. Big play here by Rad. Rad uh, has fragged out with the best of them multiple times. Survival will get to do exactly that. And here comes the cleanup. Rad, oh, <laughs> gets the, the revive, gets the headshot, does it all, walks the dog as well. And so Hype yeah, now right. holding out uh, Red Reserve. The, re the time on that revive was critical because you saw the down player on Hype calling out like, guys, there's more, more people are coming. Please stand up and defend your compound. <laughs> but that's what Survival and Rad were actually able to do by the skin of their teeth. But they're not out of it just yet because the circle continues to shift away from any cover, away from any compound. And in this party, how can you not third party anything? Look how open everything is. It's like a buffet. As you say that, Beowulf getting shot in the back. No real surprise. Urksas, the only one left up here for the team. He's going to be on doctor duty bring the team back into it but they should be okay here they have this little dip to play around with they still have to move for this next circle they've only got 50 seconds hmm. Perk. yeah he's smoking it out to make sure they can buy enough time we follow along with venerated they they're chilling they're they're big chilling they're gonna have a ways to go here in 30 seconds uphill towards best kept secret and they got to see a lot of Red Reserve get mowed down by Best Kept Secret. But they have a little bit of time. Big moves here by uh, Perksas to get everyone up and going. Uneven. And Beowulf as well. So you got, uh, I guess, all the members of Cloud9. They got three members up here uh, with three kills. Circle shifting in five seconds. And now Accelerate going to go for a revive. Everyone just kind of in damage control. This is Accelerator are in an awful position. They have to just leg it towards the circle. Open field. I don't know how long they're going to be able to survive. But C9, they're sending it, I think, at least a little more towards the south. And again, another field passage by Red Reserve. It's high ground is critical right now, but even they Ooh. aren't at, don't have a safe position to defend from. Is that a vehicle sent? <laughs> I think it was. We didn't get to see who that was, but now Starluck trying his best to get some kills from the grave, but Elise says no and execute. Continue on their march in terms of placement points. And so a lot of our teams now, only six still left up. Oh, turning the oh! corner. Great play there at the end by Elise. Survival goes down. And so catching uh, him reloading. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's just a sneaky play by Execute. Cloud9 going to rain shots down on top of the tower. 14 alive with five teams up. It's been so interesting to see how these teams have rotated because they've all done like full circles around the – like as the circle has gotten yeah. smaller, it's been like a whirlpool. Just been sucking them on in towards the center but also rotating around the outside. 
As we look at this next circle, it's pretty much dead center. Everybody has to move, but JCR sitting in the middle. They've got pretty much the only piece of cover that's not, I don't know, a tree. And they actually, I like them putting magic up here on the north side for a crossfire position to help defend that compound because it is quite small and the windows peeking out are very, very limited, not to mention the ability of the enemies to use the hill cover and third party angle it, sorry, third person angle on their strike. So having an extra piece on the outside could be good. Ooh, Rojas here, spots, executes, continued push. If execute don't clear their south side, this could be very good for Venerate to pick up more points. They only have one kill. Oh, wow. Rojas got himself a throwing arm. That nade did chunk down Elise a bit. Oh, so did that one. So he's close, but he's out of nades. And so Elise luckily will be able to get himself out of there. Smokes go up to buy a little bit of time for healing. But now Cloud9 going to start raining some shots on down, some nades on down. JCR needs to go and Magic going to send it to the rest of his team uneven. Getting bumped just a bit. Perk trying to get the send from JCR. Not quite able to get it. Uneven. So Cloud9 fighting on two different fronts. Uneven was so close with the shots. But Fate's nade much better than close bullets, as one would say, I guess. Perkasas now getting blown up by a nade. Uneven gets finished off by a nade. And Fate's just thrown in that same spot saying, hey, look, it's working. Why would I stop? Bayo able to pick up one, able to pick up two, trying to go for the third. That's no. Cloud9 going out, and it's Fate yet again. Fate had nades going one after the other in the same spot, and all of Cloud9 goes out. And there's not much you can really say about that. There's no cover outside of a single tree and a compound held by JCR. But JCR quite wounded just because that compound drew, drew so much attention. But how the Cloud9 are out, that actually gives a good uh, potential for Execute to push up this, this western side. And then there were four. Only four squads <laughs> left, 11 alive. Three members up for best kept secret. Oh, oh boy, but the push is going on through. As Nito is trying to get the shots down, is actually able to do so. Pulls out the DP, oh. can't get the sweep. Oh my goodness! At least with more nades raining down, things down, it is Zul against the world. Two teammates out of commission for now. That was a fight if I've ever seen one, Degon. Yeah, and I think he makes the right call here. Doesn't have time to get the revive. Three teams up as Magic and the rest of JCR starting to push down, execute. Zul might have time to get the revive here. As it looks like Execute still busy with Dean. Dean Ooh. does go down. Execute now. They know where the last fight was. They are focusing their targets there. But Zolt does get the revive up onto Coops. If you're Dez, I think you should be playing as information. No, they're going to go for another revive here. Coops heals on up. Who's going to be the one? Coops, you do it. I've revived you. All right, fine. <laughs> Zol's <laughs> Zol's the one that has to use the cover. This buggy has not... Has it blown up yet? I don't think it's blown up yet. So could be dangerous. As Elise now have spotted them. They know that they're at the buggy. But Nade's starting to rain down their way. Fate. Uh, he didn't like that one too much. He liked it more when he was the one throwing the nades. That's a good throw by nice. Zolz. Cooks it a little bit. And Elise gets chunked. Fate using his stims. Getting his HP back on up. And Zol going to continue throwing. Aiming a little bit further to the right, and Fate trying to pull the same move that Acer did in game number one of the beginning of the day in group one. Fate has the opportunity. He even, he even dropped his backpack, so he has a smaller profile. I, I, he might actually be able to pull this off. He's going to go for it. He gets one. He gets one. Will he be able to get the rest? No, Coops. Yes, he's still up. I, he drop shot. I thought he got knocked. No, Coops still alive. Trying to shoot through the grass. Able to land a couple. Deaths still alive at least. So low. Coops now still alive. They're all on one. This is one of the few times where he's like, I promise he's on one HP. And they're not lying. Elise now getting wrapped around upon Des going to the left side. Fate already knocked. 
Fate should be giving the information over. Coops has enough time to heal on up. Des has enough time to heal on up. Elise heals on up. Everyone back to more than just one shot here. But it's a 2v1 oh, no. with Fate just kind of crawling around. Elise gets aggressive, stands up, and it gets blown right back into his face. Big, big win here by Best Kept Secret. Staying cool under pressure. And they take the chicken dinner in their sixth game out of eight, getting closer and closer to figure out who's going to be at our finals. Played that so beautifully. One player is down, causes a distraction at other time, runs uphill, continues that threat. The, the shots were so close through the grass. One bullet, 762 at that point, would have made the difference on any player still left standing, spraying and praying. But in the end, it worked out well there for best kept secret. They were able to utilize their numbers advantage and execute on that final series of fights and they played it beautifully not just not overextending making sure they were getting those revives being cognizant of their meds being cognizant of their utility using vehicles as cover even when they weren't necessarily the best options because hey they could still explode and kill you but at the end of the day they were <laughs> able to uh they were able to get it done let's take a look back at our xperia highlights from that first game for group two cameron let's take a look i like how this game completely contradicts the kill per win stat that I loaded in because yeah, right. the team that went that hunt wasn't even the team that had the most kills. So this compound here, this was the compound that the, the whole engagement ended on. And C9 as well, they just unfortunately weren't able to get a lot from that position. But I just want to point out, execute while they got second, 15 kills. 15. In fact, I think they still got more points this game. Yes. Uh, than than the, the team that that got the chicken dinner. So in my eyes, they still won. Execute still won this game. Yeah, uh, execute definitely with the pop off performance. And I think for best kept secret for me, I I loved this fight here because that kind of shows their growth. I think best kept secret started off as a sneaky team, a secret team. But here they were willing to pull the trigger when they needed to at the right times and then get themselves much needed points, a chicken dinner. So uh, these are teams in the middle of the pack climbing their way on up and leaving teams like uh, Pittsburgh Knights on the back end there. So uh, at Red Reserve on the back end there. Red Reserve had a very active game, but I don't think they got a lot of points. So you look at uh, BKS, you look at Execute and you're like, hey, you know, way to get it done.